Hi, I'm Garland. Um, I speedrun Goldnax, so this is going to be a guide to uh, beginner mode. Uh, it's aimed at people who have already been speedrunning Goldnax and just want to know the strategies for beginner. Um, so I'm going to skip over the basics like how to do the attacks and stuff. I'm going to assume that you just want to know the strategies for beginner mode. I might do a video for newer people some point but for now this is just strategies for beginner mode so i've got my uh, pb just going to run through it and uh, just point out sort of references for where to start running and when to attack and stuff like that uh, so off we go so first thing uh, i've picked tiris that's because she has the best magic uh, therefore she's the fastest to run beginner mode and arcade mode for that matter. Another thing to point out is that uh, make sure you are using either a uh, six pack um, or if you're in Europe um, on the Mega Drive, you might want to get Mega Game 6. Both of them work. Um, they're very slightly different to the normal version of the game in that the RNG has a bit of a, a bug to it that works out better for speedrunning. More importantly, for beginner mode, you can move further to the right and left of the screen on the thief stages, and that can really help you uh, save a bit of time. So if you are playing on a real console, you probably want a six pack. Um, I can't remember. I think Mega Game 6 is mostly not region locks. There might be a couple of uh, versions of it that were region locked, but if you're playing on real hardware, you absolutely need to have um, an American Genesis or a Japanese Genesis uh, so that it's running at 60 frames a second or 59.99, whatever it is, compared to the PAL version, which only runs at about 50, so therefore it just runs the game slowly um, and you'll never get any records that way. You can, of course, just have a modded console to run the game at 60 on a PAL console that's just got a, a mod switch. Um, but most people are probably going to be running this in an emulator or on an official um, sort of PC version of the game. Um, if you are on PC, avoid the Switch version, though it's really laggy and not a great emulator underneath it. So I would advise not using that and just going for RetroArch or something. Uh, so with that said, let's get into the actual run. So on beginner mode, uh, there's no text box. Uh, you can start running as soon as Tiris reaches. There's kind of a vertical line a seam that runs all the way down the screen here. So when you've got legs one either side of it, that is when you can take control. So you want to double tap right to start running immediately. Then if you look for this sort of black patch on the transition to the rocks just after this pebble. Draw a vertical line all the way down. Uh, this is where you want to jump to time your down stab. So holding right the entire way, go into your down stab, keep holding right, and you'll hit this first guy. Then I move up ever so slightly so that I'm now on this horizontal line, ready to do a back attack straight away on this guy. So he's now in like a surround pattern because there was a guy on the right, he now wants to get onto the left of you. So he's gonna move all the way to the left. So he's a little bit past you, then he'll move down and we're gonna exploit that to hit the back attack. So you can kind of see this bubbles in the ground, you can use that as your reference. It's only a tiny bit up. Uh, so get the back attack like that. Then we're going to stay on exactly the same horizontal line. We're going to sprint to the right. And once we bump into the right hand side of the screen, I think just a very brief pause and then go into a back attack so that you hit the guy who's going to spawn on the right. Uh, then you'll notice uh, there's another guy who spawned at the top. Um, if you play this game casually, uh, he will normally sprint onto the side of the screen. But because we're in this sort of zone on the right-hand side, he'll 
instantly like lock onto the player and just start moving down towards us. So we can use that to our advantage and we're just going to move a little bit up and left and go into another back attack to kill him. So only a tiny bit needed. I'm just moving up to this next set of sort of bobbles, this next line, and then I can get a back attack on this guy. Um, probably worth pointing out that the, um, the back attack does 12 damage compared to a down stab, which does 16. Um, there is a guide onto all of the attacks and how much damage they do and how much health all the enemies have in arcade mode at least on the speedrun.com guide section so feel free to check that out if you're interested then i'm going to go to this next double set of lines ready for the thief to turn up so once i hit that vertical position i'm just going to hold right until I get to these two rocks. So when I get to just in front of the second rock, I'm going to stop and wait for the thief to move onto the screen. And that's because if I was to just hug the right hand side of the screen and attack the thief the second he arrives, well, I need to hit him twice to get both the bits of magic. So if you knock him off the screen, you then have to wait for him to come back on the screen. So that works out slower. So you have to wait for him to come into you. Then you can get the two attacks pick up both the bits of magic, and then I'm going to move down the screen. So you can see this, there's kind of like three sets of these double lines. So we want to be on this third one down, but our feet are just touching the top of it. That's like your reference for your vertical height. You're going to move into the right hand side of the screen all the way until the lag frame. So when the, um, the enemies get spawned in, the game lags for a brief moment in time. It doesn't take any input during that. Um, as soon as that lag frame finishes, I tap left and then I go straight into the back attack. That should knock the Amazon woman off of her uh, chicken leg and all um, Bizarians, as they're called in the game, or mounts, dragons, whatever. Whenever there is one on screen that doesn't have someone on it, all the enemies will just prioritize getting on it, or at least the closest one will. So this is the only guy left alive on the screen. There's a chicken leg there. He's got one track mine now. There's nothing he wants more than to get onto that chicken leg. So you can use that to predict where he's going to be and just go into the second back attack. Take him out. So then we want to move up onto the top of the screen to catch the first thief. Uh, my reference for this is I count these pebbles one, two, three, and when Tyrus's feet move above the third pebble and a little bit more, so maybe like the width of Tyrus more, um, then I go into a flying kick to get the thief on the right. So you want to be hitting that thief as soon as possible. I've got a pretty good one here. You can barely see him on the side of the screen. Um, so. As I go into the flying kick, once I start kicking, I can then start holding down so that as soon as Tyrus hits the floor, he's moving down towards uh, this next thief. You don't want to hold down and right because you don't want to be too far right relative to this guy. Um, if you're too far to the right, you won't hit him at all. If you're pretty much a little bit in front of them, you'll do a kick. Uh, the the fastest animation is actually to do a like a, a poke, so if you can get the poke, that is slightly quicker. If you manage to get left of him a little bit, uh, I think I might have only got the kick here, but um, if you do a kick, you can go straight into a poke on the next one, and that works out easier for me. It might be able to get two pokes in a row. I don't know, but I go for a kick and then a poke. So hold down until you get onto the same level as the thief. Um, it was actually a swipe and a poke, so that's at least faster than a kick. Then I move up until I can't move up anymore. And I'm going to move until I get uh, on top of this rock. Then I'm going to start my down stab onto the right with a brief pause. So move up, pause, and then go into a down stab jumping on the rock should hit this first guy and then I was on this horizontal line I move very slightly up you can see this sort of double band here so you move up into this 
and then go into the down stab for the next guy. I think you can use back attacks here and not really lose much time, but um, it's worked out slightly quicker for me. So then the next setup is the next sort of double set of lines. I'm going to plonk my foot on the top of these ones so that I'm ready for a down stab on the Bad Brothers. I'm going to hold right until I get to uh, sort of underneath this edge border of the Total Village sign. I do a very slight pause, then I double tap to run and go into a jump and I'm aiming to be up in the air during the lag frame. So I kind of want to be jumping up above or in front of this Turtle Village sign during the lag frame. As soon as the lag frame finishes or you can actually just hold down attack during the lag frame and it will go into the attack into the down stab as soon as the game unlags. Kill the first guy, then I want to be holding down and right so that as soon as I land I'm going to walk down towards um, these next two guys. The timing on this one is super tight. Um, this strategy is probably actually not the best one to use. Um, in the mug use is a slightly different strategy. I'd recommend having a look at his because I think it's easier to do. This one I think was a couple of frames faster when I timed it but there wasn't much in it so I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, but feel free to learn whichever one you want, whichever one's easiest. So I'm going to move down and right and then I want to get a down stab on both of these uh, enemies. So uh, the way the down stab works in this game is as soon as you are down stabbing towards someone, they are going to try and get out of the way unless a few things are happening. Um, I won't go into the details of that now, but for this particular down stab, I'm going to want to firstly get onto the correct horizontal line. So I'm going to actually hit the bad brother. Then I want to quickly um, run and jump when I'm facing left. So if I'm not down stabbing towards this guy, he thinks he's okay. So I'm kind of going to go out towards the left and at the last minute go into a down stab and come back right so that I barely just catch them both again. So it's a bit finicky. It takes a lot of practice, not an exact science. I actually also do a couple of swings in the air, which at the time when I did this run, I thought was more important than it actually is. If you watch the tool assisted speedrun of the arcade version of this game by Mookie, you can see it actually does a lot of slashing in the air and it does actually affect the RNG of what's happening. If you were to get rid of those slashes in the air, the task wouldn't actually work, but it's pretty, um, it's like a task trick basically. It affects things, but the only real way to profit from it is if you're in a task and you know like exactly what's going on frame by frame. So realistically, it doesn't really help you um, when you're playing it as a human. So feel free to ignore the extra slashes that I do here. And then as soon as I land on the floor, I want to be back attacking this guy. The timing is incredibly tight for that. So that is the hardest bit about this trick is getting everything in quick enough to actually land the back attack on this guy before he moves too far to the right and you just miss him. So that's the end of stage one. So now we get to the first thief stage. Uh, so a little bit on thieves. Um, so they obviously move in a random pattern. They will move, uh, alternate between left and right. So this guy came on to the screen right. So now he's going to go left. He'll roll the dice twice. Uh, first time he will decide if he's going to go uh, sort of diagonally upwards, horizontally or diagonally downwards, and then he'll roll the dice again to decide if he's going to go a little bit or a long bit in whatever direction he's picked. And there's like a range of how far he can go from sort of like this much to this much, roughly. So um, he should be roughly in this position if you have got all the strategies right. There's um, the, the RNG dice roll works um, by how long it's been in frames since the stage you started. If you were to get to this point on exactly the same frame, uh, you'll always get the same RNG. So kind of like you get a different roll of the dice for every frame that happens. 
So if you're getting to this point within the same couple of milliseconds, there's only a few patterns that you, you will see consistently. So once you get used to those, you can kind of start to learn what's going to happen, um, at least in beginner mode when, you know, the timings are, are so tight that <clears throat> you should only be getting to these stages within a couple of milliseconds of each other. So I know now this guy is going to be moving to the left. He might move up, he might move right, he might move down. But I'm quite close to him already, so I can just move uh, down and right so that I'm roughly on line with him, and then I can do a flying kick into him, and then he won't have time to run up or down out of the way. So you get the first flying kick in. Uh, you notice that I didn't actually move right, so that uh, I think it just works out a little bit better if he was to move up and down. If I'm not already too far right, then the hitbox works out better, but whatever, it's all voodoo. Uh, so you get the first attack in, and then I like to do um, poke attacks. So there's quite a precise position, uh, distance away that you need to be to get a poke attack. It's pretty much just as quick to do flying kick attacks to get all four of these bits of magic, but it feels like it's slightly quicker to get these poke attacks, so that's why I do that. And again, if you were on the six pack version of the game, if it so happened that you needed to move further to the right of the screen to get the hits on that thief, then you've got that extra wiggle room that you wouldn't have on the standard cartridge. Um, also, just pointing out that if you're not aware, it's optimal to have the thieves finish off screen after you've hit them the last time, um, because otherwise they would run to the left of the screen and you have to wait for them to finish running off the screen. So if he's all the way on the right, he's already off screen. It doesn't matter, he doesn't need to run out of the way. If he was a tiny bit on the right, he would have to run all the way across the screen and waste a load of time. So sometimes, depending on the RNG that you get, um, you might look at uh, the layout of thieves that you get, especially in arcade mode, and think, oh, I'm not sure I can get them all off the, the right-hand side of the screen. It's better to keep them left so that when you do finish, the further left they are, the less they have to run off the screen. Uh, but that is mostly irrelevant in beginner, uh, beginner mode because you should be hitting the thieves all the way off the right of the screen. Okay, ramble over. That's the end of the first stage. Uh, make sure you're picking up all of the magic because we're going to need stage four by the end of this stage. So stage two, there is a tiny seam in the texture starting around about here, going from this dark bit to a light bit, and it runs all the way up there. So once you can see it, you can see it. That is where you're going to get control over Tyrus. So when one foot's on the left and one foot's on the right, that's pretty much when you can take over. Uh, I like to just hold right a tiny bit and then go into down and right and that means I get a more consistent um, sort of suicide from this first enemy that's going to come and if I just hold down and right straight away uh, sometimes funky stuff can happen that might just be me um, but that's the strategy I use if holding down and right works so you don't change it um, pointing out what I do so holding down and right now this guy is going to suicide off the end of the stage, then I am going to be looking for, you can kind of see there's like a tile almost here, a square. So I'm aiming to be sort of in the middle of this square for my vertical position. And then I'm going to move so that Tyrus's foot is above this little bobble in the turtle's shell um, when she finishes her standing still animation. So it's actually but kind of just in front of it, but you'll see when the animation finishes, that's when the foot is above that bit. So that's what I'm looking out for. As soon as this guy starts running towards you, you can move up and dodge him. Then I want to get back on the same vertical position. I'm going to run into the right hand side of the screen just to scroll it and then I'm going to stop when I am 
just above this last bubble in this next set here. So my back foot should be just above that. And then I'm going to stop. And I am kind of using this corner here as a reference. So when the screen starts scrolling into about here, uh, as it's reaching the end of this curve, that's when I want to start my downstab. So that should get you the first guy pretty much as quick as possible. Then I'm going to have a brief pause. I'm going to look for this route <clears throat> in the background, draw like a vertical line down from that. I want to jump here. So you are ideally jumping just as this guy starts going into his sprint attack, and then you're going to go back to the right and down stab him, ideally in the air. So you get that trick right. You are down stabbing him and hitting him before he hits the floor. That's how you know you've done it quickly. Um, if you hit him when he's on the ground, you lost a couple of frames. Not the end of the world, but that's how you know you've done it quicker. Uh, optionally, attack the villagers. And then the dragon is going to appear up on the top right here. So I've moved up into the top of this bit of scenery to get onto the, uh, the vertical line that I want. And I'm just holding right until Sirius's head gets underneath this plank here. And then usually I would um, tap left and wait for the lag frame because if you've been speed running Golden Axe much, you will probably know back attacks suck. And if you tap, um, jump and attack together, you'll do the back attack. But if you hit one of them ever so slightly before the other one, you'll either just attack or jump. And depending where it happens in your run, it could be a run killer. Um, it's needlessly precise. It has to be on exactly the same frames. If the game's running at 60 frames a second, you know, you there's not much you can do about it. You're probably going to get it wrong a couple of times in a run. Um, but when you get a lag frame, you can um, hold down inputs and when the game unfreezes, those inputs will happen. So the game can't check for inputs when it's lagging and loading the enemies in. As soon as it finishes unlagging, it checks for what inputs are held down and does that. So you can get a free down stab here in arcade mode if you just get to this position, tap left, and then wait for the lag frame. When the game starts lagging, hold down, attack and jump together, and then when the game unlikes, you've got a guaranteed back attack with no shenanigans. Uh, it's kind of like a free back attack. But on beginner mode, if you want to go as quick as possible, it's actually quicker to start doing the back attack before the lag frame. So same position, same setup, but I go into the back attack ever so slightly earlier. So I've hit the, uh, the Dragon Rider, then on arcade mode, I'd usually sort of pause around here for a, a brief moment and then sprint to the right and start doing a down stab from in the middle of the dragon saddle. Uh, but because it's beginner mode and I want to go slightly quicker, I don't want to do that pause. I move up slightly just to kind of like this little line here. Then I'm going to sprint to the right. And then when I'm over the tail of the dragon, so just after the saddle when I get over the tail I'm going to turn around and do a back attack on the next Amazon woman and then I need to sprint back towards the right um, because I moved up I'm going to bonk into the side of this building now because there's like a hitbox around it so I need to move to the edge of this down a little bit and then I can do a back attack on the guy that's going to move in from the right And then just move to the right in preparation for the thief. So they're going to appear, if you look at this sort of smear on the ground, this dark patch, it's going to be roughly in line with that. So I just want to move up into this vertical position, hold right until the thief appears, and then I can turn around and start attacking. I'll give him one attack, a stab, and then a, a flying kick. Uh, but feel free to chill out for this bit. You don't need to be frame perfect. The villagers here have to finish running off the side of the screen before the screen can transition to the next bit. So that should be ample time to get the three hits on the thief. So don't worry about being pixel perfect, frame perfect on this bit, whatever. Just chill out um, as long as you get those three hits before 
the villagers have run off the screen and you are all good. Remember to pick up two bits and two bits only because uh, you need stage four to... Um, in fact, I don't think you need stage four, but stage four is quicker than stage three. So stage four is the fastest magic to use at the end of the stage. So that's what you want to have. So I'm now going to move up into this building so that I can't move any higher. And then I'm going to start holding right. Then I'm looking out for, you kind of get like one big door and then two little holes. So the second hole, um, I'd usually on arcade mode sort of wait until I get to the middle when I used to use this strategy for arcade mode. But because we're on beginner, we can go ever so slightly earlier. So as soon as you get to like the first half of this black bit, then you can turn around and go into a back attack. And you should hit first two enemies. And you want to be moving down and right and back attacking this Amazon woman as soon as possible. So you don't need to go down exactly to the same vertical level. There's a little bit of wiggle room. So pretty much on top of this wavy line, if you, as soon as you get to that bit, then you can go into the, uh, the back attack. And then that scream um, is my audio cue for when to do the magic. So as soon as that sound effect finishes, the guys load in and you can um, press the magic button. So make sure you get used to listening to that wonderful screeching sound that is embedded into my brain. Uh, I know it very well. So when you get used to how long that sound effect takes, that's your cue to press magic. Um, I, th I got it not quite frame perfect on this one. You can press it. Um, I think there's one frame where the enemies are completely invisible and you can't see them and you still manage to hit them with magic, or even if it is a bit scary when you get it because you think you might have gone a bit early. I can just about see the dragon's nose there, so I know I've been quick, but um, I've definitely got it. So it is reassuring to see that couple of pixels down there. And that is the end of stage two. So then we go on to the thieves. So uh, depending which pattern you get, it might be quicker to juggle them left and right. But I am looking at this pattern and I think I want this guy to move to the left enough so that I can then get four hits on him and knock him off the side of the screen. Um, these guys are not quite together, so I think I've moved down hoping I can get both of them quickly in one uh, flying kick attack to begin with. I think the green thief actually dodges out of the way, um, so that didn't work out. But from this point, uh, I don't want to waste any time chasing the green thief because it's beginner mode. It might have been different if it was arcade mode, but I'm just going to be optimistic now and hope that the green guy moves up into me, which he does, fortunately. And then I'm going to go into my poke attacks to finish off the stage. And in fact, there's a flying kick for the it's five times you need to hit him. So fifth magic potion. And this is why the six pack or the Mega Game six is really important because I wouldn't have been able to move this far to the right of the screen on the normal version of the game. So um, I'd have then had to hope I could do a back attack maybe to reach that guy, or I might not have been able to reach the thief and had to wait for him to come all the way back on the screen, wasting a load of time. Then pick up to level four magic. Don't get level five because it's a slower animation and you don't need it for the next magic use. Okay, so start of stage three, I'm looking between these two rocks, there's sort of a vertical seam here. So when you've got a leg either side of that, that's when you get control of Tiris. So as soon as that happens, I want to sprint to the right and start doing a flying kick so that I land with my feet against here. So I think it's a tiny little run and then a flying kick. So it's not like run flying kick straight away, it's run flying kick shortly afterwards, if that makes any sense. Um, 
Then I wait for the lag frame, and as soon as the lag frame finishes, I can use magic uh, to get rid of this first pack. And then I, I'm just looking for this line in the planks here for my vertical positioning. Then I just hold right into the side of the screen until the thief turns up. And I can turn around and just get two attacks on him to knock him into the pit. So as soon as I pick up the, uh, the potion here, I'm going to move up and right so that I hit the uh, collision box up here. So I'm as high as possible. And then I am going to keep holding right until I reach uh, sort of in the middle of this black gap in the door here. And then I know I can turn around and do a back attack. It's first Amazon. And then I just want to be moving down to the feet. Uh, so I'm in line vertically with the feet of the second enemy. So I can do the back attack on them as well. I think I actually go down a bit too far. Um, which I think is because you still need to be close enough horizontally to get the attack in. So if you go too far up, I think you actually miss. Um, so play around with this one. You might want your own reference point. Um, I don't have like a left and right reference point. It's just sort of kind of get to a roundabout here and do it. I think I might have been a little bit late on the input there. So that's potentially some time saved for you. Then um, I use this exact same strategy for arcade mode and beginner mode. So I move up, so I'm underneath this window. I'm in the top right of the screen. I can't move any further up. I can't move any further right. Then I wait. So after the screen starts scrolling, I don't move. I wait for the uh, D to be visible. So as soon as I can see that D, I then start sprinting to the right. Uh, little bit of trivia this I think is bed spelled backwards um, because it's supposed to be an in and because it used to be um, a, well it is a Japanese game just a mistranslation and Japanese people often write the opposite way around to us so I think that is how it ends up saying Deb which has puzzled some people that's the leading theory but back to the speed run when you start sprinting right Hold down right until the lag frame happens. You should be roughly um, with your shoulders either side of the start of the door when you hit the lag frame. Then you can start holding jump and keep holding right so that when the game unlikes you go into a jump and then you can start your down stab. You want to keep going right until you get past the halfway of the door then you can turn around and come back the other way. And the idea is that when you turn around, I go back a tiny bit, your sword should be more or less on the middle of the door. I mean, it doesn't need to be that precise. There is a bit of wiggle room in this. You know, when you're sprinting up to here, you can be a bit further on. Uh, you can be a little bit further back. Um, it is more forgiving than you might think. Um, so hopefully then you will get the down stab on both these guys. You need to do the second down stab. And then I moved all the way to the top right of the screen. And then I tapped down twice to get to sort of this line here on these big pebbles, if you can sort of see them. Then I look for the corner of this building here. So I want to move sort of one terrace width past it and then wait for the thieves to come to me. And that means that I can just get a swipe and a poke on them. And then I do a flying kick into the last one. And then I need to set up for the next pack. So I'm going to move up to you can see this black line on the pebbles here. That's going to be my vertical position and then I'm just going to start holding right to move as far right as I can uh, for the next pack but don't forget to pick up the magic pot as well you need level five um, you can do it with level four but level five works out slightly quicker because you only need two down stabs so even though level four is a faster animation than level five magic 
uh, you save more time by only having to do two down stubs compared to three, I think. So get the magic. Um, there's a little sprint there to make sure I'm into the right hand side of the screen. Then I'm looking for the, is it road one, round one? That sign there, as soon as Tyrus is underneath that, I can tap left and go into a back attack to get the first two guys. And then I move left ever so slightly and then go into the back attack for the second guy. And then immediately move up to the top of the screen. I mean, you don't need to be exactly at the top for the lag frame, but it just means there's less to do and less to worry about for setting up the down stabs. So try and get as far up the screen as you can. When you get the lag frame, start hammering your magic button so that you get magic as soon as the game on lags. And then you want to do two down stabs. So when you're timing the down stab, you want to um, jump just as um, Death Adder Jr. in this case starts his kneel animation. So I think I was a little bit early there actually. So just when he gets to this point, you can do the jump. So you can see he's stood up now and I connect with him. And because I was maybe a little bit early, I'm just about to hit the floor. So if I'd have been a tiny bit earlier than that, I might have hit the floor before actually attacking him. So you probably want to err on the side of being a bit later so that if it, if you do get it wrong, you've you may be gone a bit late and he's been stood up for a couple of frames when you could have attacked him rather than if you hit the floor too early um he's just going to attack you and that's run over but if you if you want to get it um as many frames removed as possible then i guess you're gonna have to do the same as me and that's the end of the run so um hopefully that has been useful to some people if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out, um, leave a comment, or go to the speedrun.com forum, or there's a Discord, feel free to uh, reach out. Hopefully someone will answer your questions. Um, I also just want to say thanks to all the other people who run beginner mode. I think I came onto it quite late, so Beadle in the mug, no control, uh, those guys sort of did all the strats for me uh, so I could just copy them for beginner mode. So they are the pioneers of these strategies. I didn't really invent any of them. Um, so yeah, massive thanks to those people, but thank you for watching and see you later.